Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to this edition of Living the Little Way. Uh, this afternoon, we have had the privilege of interviewing Shirley Buckholz. Uh, Shirley is well known to most of our parishioners. Um, she suffers a debilitating uh, disorder of the central nervous system that causes it in, for her to find great difficulty in movement. So she is confined to an automatic chair, uh, which she gets around in quite well. And uh, today we're going to interview her because it's important that we come to know Jesus Christ, not only in Shirley's love, but in the love of anyone who suffers from any kind of disability, uh, any kind of disorder, disease, whatever it may be. We can, we can learn great things from them. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to this uh, edition, special edition of Living the Little Way. Uh, it's my great yes. pleasure today to have with us Shirley Buckholz, who has been a long time yes. parishioner yes. of St. Therese yes. Parish. Yes. How long have you been a member here, uh, uh, 15 years that you've been uh, a member. Yeah, yeah. And you, have you always lived over on 26th Street? No. I, 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 I live over at Sycamore. Over on Sycamore, okay. Yeah, yeah, That's how you got associated yeah. with... St. Therese. Yeah, yeah. So, you know something, Shirley, one of the things that I notice most about you when you come to Mass <laughs> is how much you love the Eucharist, the yeah. body and blood of Christ. <laughs> Have you always felt that way about Holy Communion? Uh, yeah, all, all my life I, I've been, been to church with my, my, my mom and, and dad. Where did you grow up, Shirley? Okay, I didn't quite understand what you said. Winter. Winter? Ah, you grew up in winter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's way out there. Yeah. So when? How old were you when you came to Sioux Falls? I, I was uh, five years old. Five years old, and you, yeah. and you lived in a special school or a special yeah. home. Yeah, I I went to school and in here. Okay, was that hard to leave home? Yeah, yeah. I bet it was. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> So then, how long have you been in Sioux Falls? About 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> I'm so glad you're a member of the parish. What do you like most about St. Therese? Okay. I'm over here. So I, I can help, help you out. You can help us out, and you do that in a lot of ways. <laughs> you uh, pass out uh, music issues when you come in, and you welcome yeah. people, um, and you sing in the choir. Yeah. Uh, and you always come to the dinners, too, the fish yeah. dinners. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. What do you like about the dinners? I, I can help, help serve. You can help serve. Yeah. And you're a pretty good good server, let me tell you. But you also like the food. Yeah, yeah that too. That too, huh? Okay. <laughs> so, Shirley, tell me what, you know, when you think about your faith and, and going to church, what's most important to you? Oh, this is my, my, my home. This is your home? Yeah, I, I love the St. Therese. So you uh, really feel that that this is like your real home, and you come here, and you feel that everybody loves you and accepts you. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anybody that's had as much love of the Eucharist as you have. 
can I, can I, I, I help you be the, be the, be the, uh, a baby in the, in the wine up. Oh, bringing the bread and wine up for the uh, gifts. Yeah. Yes, we could certainly do that. Would you like to do that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, the next time you come, we'll do that. <laughs> Is that yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you have to stay in the back until that time. Though. Okay. All right? Yeah. And you have to remind me because I'm kind of forgetful. <laughs> Do you remember the time I forgot you? <laughs> yeah. And you came up to the altar and you just had tears coming down your face. I felt so bad that I had forgotten you. But you know, you taught me a lesson. You taught me that if you love God in the Eucharist, that's the most important thing. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I I love the people here. So I I can help help them, and I can talk to them. Please. You can do what? Talk talk to you if 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 I have to. That's right, you can. I come over and visit sometimes, don't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's got a really nice apartment. Um, she's got a big bedroom, and there are people there that watch over her. Also, she's got a big fancy TV. Yeah. You've got a lot of movies, too. Yeah. <laughs> Which is your favorite movie? Oh, this is The Bellfire. Oh, Mrs. Doubtfire? Yeah. <laughs> you like that one, huh? Yeah. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know something, Shirley? I'm so happy that you're part of our parish. <laughs> I'm also fascinated by how many art projects you do. <laughs> how many do you do a week? You spend your time doing a lot of that, don't you? Yeah. Yes, you do. And you're quite good at it. You <laughs> Tell me how you do it. Like if I were your helper, you tell me where to paint, where the color to use. Yeah, yeah. And you tell me what you want on the canvas and. I I I I the 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 time to 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 to, to do all all three cups and, and the. Okay, what about when you're doing like the ceramics? That, that, too, yeah, yeah, I... Yo, know, you tell them what, the, what color to paint them? Yeah, yeah. Where do you do those at, Shirley? At home. Oh, you do all of that at home? And then they take them somewhere and fire them? Yeah, at the color we burn. Okay, all right. Well, you, you do that probably what... Once or twice a week, don't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's so good. You know, you're a real witness to people, Shirley. And you got a great sense of humor. You know something? You and I are just about the same age, aren't we? Yeah. How old are you? Uh, uh, 72. 72? Yeah. Wow, I'm a little bit older. I'm one year older than you. And you're much more beautiful than me. So how's that for you? Well, that was quite an interview that we had with Shirley here just a few moments ago. Um, some questions came up and were given to me uh, about this uh, particular uh, edition of Living the Little Way, and uh, especially as it relates to Shirley, one of them was about how Shirley communicates. And of course, because of the nature of the uh, disorder that she has, the disease that she has, it's hard for her uh, to be clear in her speech. But um, I found over the years that as I've communicated with her, um, it's easy for me to begin to pick up uh, exactly what she's saying. And even if I have to um, come back and say, can you say that again, Shirley? Um, she's never offended by that uh, and always goes on to clarify what she meant. 
Um, one of the things that I've also noticed with people is that because they have trouble maybe understanding surely, they back off and they don't want to um, communicate because they uh, are afraid either she won't understand or uh, that you won't understand what she's trying to tell you. But you know something, Shirley is an extremely sensitive individual and uh, she understands when people are fearful around her or uh, hesitant to communicate with her. Uh, and you know, um, she's stock full of feelings and so I think we need to be sensitive to never withdrawing from her and always engaging with her. Another thing that I've come to know about Shirley, and this is one thing that Deacon Thane wrote down, was that she always has joy and hardship. Um, and she's had some pretty rough things that have happened to her. Um, her mom and dad dying, of course, were difficult for her. Um, she has one sister here in Sioux Falls, but because of how schedules uh, blend, you know, it's not always easy for her to get together with her sister. Um, and I know that that causes some hurt for Shirley. Um, but she endures it and she doesn't ever pull away from it. She doesn't say, no, I don't want to go through this. Uh, she's always willing to put up with whatever uh, comes her way. Even when, uh, for example, she accidentally got dropped over at the house, you know, it wasn't anybody's fault, but she ended up uh, falling and that hurt her for a period of time. But she endured that. She never was there blaming anybody or uh, being angry with anybody. She just endured what came her way. One of my very favorite memories of Shirley is um, she had been gone for a little bit of time um, and she had had some trouble swallowing and so um, we couldn't give her the Eucharist because they were afraid that she would aspirate or um, the, the host would end up in her lungs. So uh, for a period of time she wasn't receiving Holy Communion and when they cleared her again to receive, they told us just to give a very tiny piece to her. Well, the very first time she came to Mass after that, I uh, just forgot. I forgot to bring the Eucharist to her um, or to send anybody over with the Eucharist to her. And after Mass, she came up and there were just tears coming down her eyes, out of her, down her face. She was so hurt and so upset that she couldn't receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And that caused me to really look at my own reverence for the Eucharist, how much I love the Eucharist, and I do, but, you know, maybe I need to be as transparent and open with my feelings as Shirley is. Um, thank the Lord I haven't forgotten to give her communion since, Came close one time, but somebody reminded me that I'd better get over there to take care of her. So I'm always reminded of her love of Jesus Christ and the Eucharist. One of the things that is another uh, memory that I have is each Christmas, Shirley brings in art projects and gifts that she's made for different people in the parish. And this last Christmas, she brought in this painting for everybody here at St. Therese. And if I look at it, it says, these are the things that she loves about St. Therese. And she's got a heart and St. Therese written in the middle of it. And she says, I love the fish fries. I love the bake sales. I love music. I love my mom and dad being here. I love going for coffee. I love Father Kevin cookies, the kitchen, gardening, um, and she also loves uh, the fact that this is her home, and that's how she sees St. Therese Parish. So this is a prized possession that we'll keep here because it took her a long time to make sure that all of those things were included on this painting. 
uh, one person wanted to know what can we learn from Shirley, and I, I think that's going to be different for each person. But when we enter into a relationship with her, or with anyone for that matter, we will be surprised at the great gifts of learning that will come our way. So the best thing I can say is, what can we learn from Shirley? Be around her and you'll find out pretty quick what you can learn from her because she's got a big heart and is a lovely person. She'll teach you and teach you well. Today's question for you, Father Odell, is what are the Liturgy of the Hours, and should the laity be praying them? The Mass is the preeminent way that we offer worship to God in a public way. The Liturgy of the Hours is the second most public and important way that we offer praise to God. The Liturgy of the Hours re reminds us that we are called to pray constantly throughout the day. So the Liturgy of the Hours are divided into seven different times of prayer uh, and priests and nuns throughout the world and many, many, many lay people pray these hours uh, not offering the prayer up for themselves but offering their prayer up for others and the church. So is it a good practice? Absolutely. Should the laity do it? Absolutely. Um, and is it part of the public worship of the church? Absolutely. And when we talk about the public worship of the church versus private worship, uh, we need to remember that even uh, devotions like the rosary or litanies or uh, many of the private prayers that we say are really private devotions that we offer every day. They are good, but they're not part of the public worship of the church. We thank the Lord today for having Shirley with us. Uh, we, I hope that we have her for a lot longer. You know, she's exactly my age, and so um, I know that sometimes it's hard for her to get around, but uh, let's pray for her and for us that we may always be open to people um, that have trouble getting around, uh, and yet they still come around. They want to be close to Jesus and close to us. Do you want to say a prayer? you want to lead the prayer? Yeah. Okay. In the name of the Father, uh, and of the, and the Son, Son, and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. What prayer are we going to say? Holy Mary, Holy Mary. Okay. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want all of you to know that Shirley is such a delightful person. <laughs> Just take some time and get to know her, and you know you'll catch on quick uh, to be able to understand what she's telling you.